Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be discussing a common topic that I get in my DMs, just how I became an aesthetic PA and different routes that one can go. We'll go into just my recommendations or what my thoughts are and what I think works best to go down that route. So let's get into this video. As I discussed in my previous video, you all know that I was a dermatology PA prior to becoming an aesthetics PA. When I was a derm PA and when I switched practice Practices, I switched practices because I wanted to get some cosmetic exposure. So I love the medical aspect of dermatology, but I really wanted to get into the cosmetic portion, meaning doing lasers, doing injectables, or transitioning my medical patients into aesthetic patients. So if I'm treating a patient with acne, I can now do different cosmetic procedures to help improve whether it's acne scarring or skin texture, tone, and so forth. When I was a dermatology PA, I did get exposure to injectables and I was doing a lot of laser treatments and various treatments for the skin. That wasn't my main job as a dermatology PA. It was more medical than it was cosmetic, but I knew that ultimately my goal was to be a full-time aesthetics PA. However, I kind of went down different paths before that actually became my present. Like I said previously, I did general surgery because I thought that was a great way to one, just improve my hand skill set. So having a steady hand, being comfortable in the operating room, these are all great ways personally to become a better aesthetic provider. Same with urgent care. I was doing lots of procedures and laceration repairs that made me a better provider just in being autonomous and managing my own patients. So now as an aesthetic provider or as an aesthetic PA, I manage my own patients. These are my patients. So having a job in an autonomous setting really just helps you grow as a PA and really makes you just feel comfortable managing all these patients on your own. So like I said previously, I did have exposure to the aesthetics world. However, once moving back to New York, I knew and you know, after being a PA for seven years, I knew that this was the time that I really wanted to zone in on the field of medicine that I see long term for myself. And that was either going to be one, purely aesthetics, two, dermatology PA, again, with more aesthetics or more cosmetics, I should say, or three, working in a plastic surgery office. So those were my three options. Working as a plastics PA, I had the derm experience and I had the surgery experience. So I felt like this was a great fit for me as well. Being a dermatology PA with some cosmetics, again, I was comfortable in that. And then solely aesthetics, that was going to be the field of medicine where I'm going to now take a little bit of a different route, but really grow, zone in, focus, on that specialty. So when the opportunity came to be a full-time aesthetics PA, I was so happy and I, of course, took that position. No matter where you are, whether it's a dermatology office, plastic surgery office, purely aesthetics office, there's always going to be a training period. That's normal. Like I said, when I was a full-time dermatology PA, my first six months were a training period. Even though you had a rotation or you had a previous job where you did a little bit of the same things, it's always going to be a training period, just of one getting familiar with the practice, seeing how they do things and so on. For me, I was jumping into a new specialty, but also I had experience in it. So it wasn't solely new, but I knew that this was my opportunity to really do what I want and what I see myself doing for the rest of my career as a PA. That's what I'm hoping for. That's what I see myself as. Of course, it's awesome that I've had all the other experience in various specialties because if I ever wanted to go back into those specialties, I will feel comfortable going back into those specialties. And that's the beauty of being a PA. You know, if you love two specialties so much, you can practice in those two specialties and it just makes one your career that much more interesting. Or if you want to try one specialty, specialty and you see that hmm, maybe I like this one a little bit more, you can now go into that specialty full time and keep the other one part time. It's great. It's awesome. I really love that. That's what I did. And that was just my path to becoming an aesthetics PA. Now I get so many questions on like, should I take a course? After I take a course, I'm going to be the greatest injector. And you know, there are courses out there. I attended a course many years ago when I was a dermatology PA. And sure, I guess maybe a good start, but really what I always tell either new grads or even PAs who aren't new grads but are trying to transition into becoming an aesthetics PA, find a practice 
that you can just shadow. When I mentioned before, like you always will have to take some sacrifice. Yeah, sometimes on your free time, you're going to shadow and not get paid. That's how you really learn, getting that exposure. You can attend various you know, courses that there are. Companies will also provide many, many trainings for you. But I always say on top of those trainings, it's always just great to just get that exposure and shadowing You know, the practice or various providers or wherever you can get in, whether that's at a dermatology office, a plastic surgery office, a medi spa, just an aesthetics place. It's just great to have that exposure. You really learn so much. It's like going on another rotation, basically. Think about when you were on your rotations. The first couple of weeks were kind of like a learning period. You were just getting the hang of things. And then by like week five, you were like, this is great. And you felt comfortable. And basically you're shadowing in those first couple of weeks. In this specialty, you may have to shadow a little bit longer than a couple of weeks, but I'm just kind of trying to make that comparison. So yes, going to courses is great, but reach out to other PAs and PEs physicians, dermatologists, plastic surgeons, everyone's always looking for a helpful hand. So it doesn't hurt to really reach out and just inquire if they have shadowing opportunities. You never know what may come from that. At that point, maybe they're going to be looking for another provider. So this would be you know, a great way to get your foot into the door. So one, my word of advice, if you're a new grad is get a job as a dermatology PA or plastics PA. Two, if you can find a job in those specialties, get a job in some form of surgery subspecialty. And then three, if you can't get a job in any of the above, then at that point, find a job in any specialty that you really enjoy and then find shadowing opportunities. So I think that's a great way as a new grad to get your foot in the door. Secondly, if you are a, not a new grad, but you wanna get into that field, one, find a practice where you can get some shadowing opportunities. Two, find maybe a per diem job in a dermatology office, in a plastic surgery office. I'm in the New York City area, or I should say the tri-state area, and I've seen lots of opportunities for part-time PA work in plastic surgery offices, in germ practices, and a lot of practices may be open to that. Reach out to all the practices near you for some per diem work. And three, sure, if you can get a CME course where you can go to an injectable aesthetics course, that'd be awesome. So you can get just some knowledge about injectables. I will say it's very, 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 very important to, especially as a new grad or even as a, an already established PA, and if you're going to go and find these shadowing opportunities, know your anatomy, know your facial anatomy, I should say. That really, really, really is key. Before you're even stepping foot into the door of these practices, make sure you know that. That will set you apart from other applicants or even other providers that may be shadowing or wanting a foot in the door as well. Okay, so now that you know my journey into becoming an aesthetics PA and my advice to any provider trying to get into the aesthetics field. Let me know if you have any specific questions. It will take some time for me to answer back. One, I'm new to this whole entire YouTube scene. I'm also working full time. But other than that, please like and comment on this video. Follow me on Instagram if you don't already. Leave some comments on other videos that you think may be helpful, that you wanna know. I will be getting a hair and makeup tutorial. I know that's highly requested. I will try to do some fashion hauls as well. I know you wanted some videos that are not medical. I did promise that as well. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you all on the next one. Bye.